What's up, everybody? Welcome to A Bit Unraveled Comedy Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Hansinger. And let's get into it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another week of A Bit Unraveled. Uh, I've got a great guest for you this week. Super excited to have this guy on. I uh, haven't seen him in a while because everything's on lockdown, of course. Uh, but I've known this guy for a while and I've uh, been catching up on some of his work. He's been on the Connors recently, uh, Criminal Minds, Sorry for Your Loss, Superstore, and much more. Please welcome to the podcast, Ken Hodges. Why, hello. What's up, sir? How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Man, it's good to see you. You too. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Happy uh, hump day. It is. It's hump day, man. Halfway through the week. It's a good week too. It's like it's been. I, it's been a nice week. It's kind of nice a little bit, like a little touch of spring after uh, the cold front swept through. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then just you know, try and stay busy through it all. And you know, us on the coast, we don't deal with any of that, luckily. So I we're know. Spoiled just watching it here. from afar. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was wild seeing the maps where we were like the only states like it was us in florida we're only like the only states above 32 degrees it was insane yeah it's like the little edges right there i mean even freaking even, even freaking mexico was like hit that cold snap northern part of mexico it's like if you're not on the coast of the united states you're absolutely fucked at this point you're done yeah you know? you're i done. mean obviously my heart goes out to them but and, and i'm not trying to gloat or anything but maybe i'm gloating just a little bit but i mean i hope everything's fine out there no, absolutely. No, you, you, yeah, you feel for everybody in that situation, but when you're not in that situation, you're grateful for not being in this situation. That's you appreciate what you have. Exactly. Uh, which is, is, uh, you know, just a, a dry spell between fires. <laughs> so we'll get ours. Which is exactly what it is. It'll only be a couple more months till the whole freaking state's on fire again, right? Yeah. And then people will be laughing at us um yeah or, but with <laughs> but with their heartfelt condolences at the same time the same way the same way and then they'll be right. you know be like well at least we don't live there so all good exactly yeah well it's good to see you man it's uh it's weird you too it's uh, been a while it's been a while I and mean, it has and uh you know so it's nice to sit down I, it's i was just thinking right before we came on it's it's a weird time when you're seeing more of your friends on tv than in person <laughs> Like we, like we yeah. saw you. We it's, saw your it's, it's really odd to see that. Yeah, like we saw your episode. Oh, of which Con one? The Connors. Uh, of the. Uh, oh, great. Yeah, and so it's just funny. Like during all this time, it's like it's funny watching friends, you know, pop up and be like, "Hey, I haven't seen him in person in a while, but there he is on the show." Um, yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, it, 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 the, the amount of times we haven't seen friends is, it feels, and it feels so odd too because for. A lot of people man they're just a drive down the road you know what i mean but yeah. still just not seeing them i know you know it's weird it's weird times um but it seems well, like allison saw know. ashley briefly when she was picking up cupcakes and then that was it just a quick hello and goodbye you know what i yeah. mean yeah uh, yeah she's delivering the cupcakes now but she's almost tossing them out the door <laughs> that, that's like <laughs> that's like the way to see people and then it's like uh you know even then you you don't want to you want to hang around but you you're trying not to hang around too much because you know because you, you want to you want to keep your own comfort level and you're trying to gauge other people's comfort levels at the same time you don't want to overstep you know yeah it's tricky it's a tricky balance yeah because you want to hang out there are a lot of these people that are ordering from her she hasn't seen and it's so long so everybody's like oh, people are almost ordering to hang out if that makes sense <laughs> like people yeah, are like does. look uh, when you deliver the cupcakes do you want to have a drink for like an hour and it's so uh, you have to like uh, I don't know. Can we can we do that? Do you have a rapid no. test? Um, yeah. Can we separate six feet in your backyard? Maybe. Who knows? Right. Right. Yeah. So it's it's delicate, but uh, yeah, she's definitely been staying busy with those. Um, but yeah, and they are phenomenal, by the way. Like that, unreal good. Yeah, yeah, they're good. I'm happy to see more of them going out of the house and less into my belly because. I will eat. I, I, for so a while, I was eating <laughs> constantly, man. I was having like a cupcake twice a day, and I was like, "This is too much." I got to try. Oh, this sounds like heaven to me. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's delicious, but uh, I could feel it. I could, I could just, it, it hurt. Feel it uh, in your groin, in your belly. Oh man, it's yeah, in the best of ways. Uh, for anybody <laughs> out there in Los Angeles, order the cupcakes. You won't regret it. Um, I can attest to that. Yeah. 
Well, that's cool, man. But you've been doing okay during the uh, during the, the shutdowns and everything. I've been fortunate enough that my day job wasn't affected, which yeah. is like my night job, and I've actually been able to book uh, book a few jobs. You know, yeah. I just filmed one uh, two weeks ago. So oh, for, fantastic! Uh, they brought me back for another episode of Superstore, so that's oh my cool. God. So, and then I uh, was slated to start shooting a movie, but because of COVID, some things got back ended. And so now that's being pushed back a few months. So hopefully that will pick up, you know, yeah. soon again, and we can begin on that. Cause I'm excited for that as well. So that's I have been awesome. fortunate, but yeah, like, so, and then I, that's I, where like, sort of like the guilt comes in where I feel bad. It's like, I still get to work 40 hours and I'm still booking stuff and wow, you see some good. of my friends. Yeah. That's, that's good. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always excited for the people who are like, cause there's, there's people that I've been able to talk to through this and, and just seeing on social media and stuff, but uh, who are like thriving during all this. And, and it's great to see. And it's so, like, don't feel bad. You worked hard to get to that point. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's cool. And, uh, you know, it's it's neat. I, we were watching your Superstore episodes and uh, which is like, the it's the greatest reoccurring. Are, are you back as the same character? Yeah, I mean, the episode airs in probably next week. So I think it's okay to say, oh, okay. but yeah. Well, maybe- Shh, okay. hush hush guys no. but but uh, i don't know why it wouldn't be but yeah so so it's uh it's the same sort of thing i think it's fine it, why no it's, be, but, but well let's, we're talking more about your past recurring role but uh, yeah but i love that you had you had two is like uh the and it was just like an awesome you had shrimp customer and it was awesome yeah. and uh, it's quick it's like boom 30 seconds and then maybe 45 seconds quick little joke boom. in and out yeah you know? but it it's cool fun. to be part of the universe you know what i mean yeah oh absolutely it was just it was such a funny specific to bring back and i loved it it was like i was like oh you strip guy again this guy's just it's part of that world like we you go to this, this i go to the same routes every week it was like you know and what's cool about that show is they have a lot of those those sort of like strange characters that you would see and yeah. those in those random areas and it's like yeah you see that type of person at walmart you see the kind of guy at target you know what i mean totally. and uh, and the show's great like that like justin spitzer had an awesome idea and he created an awesome show you know it's awesome I would be discount steak guy. I would be the guy <laughs> looking for the for like the four dollar steak that that'll be the two of us. Yeah. Hey, but it's all about preparation. If you can buy the four dollar steak and prepare it the right way, you're fine. Seriously, like I, I, I mean, I, I feel like I season it right and I, I know how to cook a steak right. Like, we're happy. We're stoked. And people are like, "Where the hell did you get a four dollar steak?" I'm like, "Under the eleven dollar one. It was right there, and it was delicious." <laughs> It and I know just, what I'm doing. Tell them that I know how to prepare a goddamn steak, so I know how it's done. A little McCormick steak rub, a little rosemary, and dude, you're in business. What do you do? Do you do like, medium rare, uh, rare? How do you like it? Medium rare, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I, I'll do a rare, but I feel like medium rare is good. Where, where I feel like good? medium rare is the absolute best. Can't do well done, but I can't do blue. It's got to be a medium rare, and you're good. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like. Yeah. Well, who's doing well done? Why are we doing that? Trump was doing well done for a while, I think. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. He's That's eating his steaks well done with ketchup. That's you know? why he's angry. <laughs> You're chilling. Uh, he's hurting his teeth. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons why I hated steak when I was a child. It's because my mom always prepared it well done. And I thought this, like in my head, I'm like, why are people always so excited about steak? Yeah. This takes me like 10 minutes to chew with my tiny little teeth. I would hide it under the mashed potatoes and pretend like I finished it. You really? know what I mean? And then like, I get, I, I get a bit older. It's like, you need to try it medium. Well, I'm like, I don't know, man, it looks a little bloody or excuse me, medium rare. Try it yeah. medium rare. Try it. I'm like, Oh, this is now it makes sense. This you know what I mean? Steak. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I love that you didn't just dislike it. It's like, well done steak. You went to the extreme of hiding the steak. Like you weren't like, I'm not even going to eat it if I can get away with it. I would go to different extremes. Like I would like, I used to drink orange soda a lot when I was a kid, terrible, but I used to drink like a glass of orange soda with dinner. I would put the steak in the orange soda and pretend like, Oh, I finished. And then just find a way to put it down the garbage disposal, you know, great. Fucked up the garbage disposal because the steak was well done and the goddamn garbage disposal can't break that shit up. That <laughs> me up. Yeah. So that's a bad steak. <laughs> oh. But hey, that's that's hilarious. Um <laughs> I don't know if I have a food that I hated so no, I do. Onions. Everybody would attest this. I can't stand onions. But oh, that's not that's onions. something I've never gotten like it, I never figured out how to cook it better. Uh, okay. But that is there something tough. you can tolerate it on? Onion rings. I will eat onion rings. I can do deep fried onions with uh, <laughs> a dip. 
and that's that that's if i make it worse for my body i like it yeah i can figure that and that's just fried food at that point and that's i can do that um that's cool man well yeah i want to i want to talk about some of your roles and stuff because it's it's been fun and it's been fun you know what i've loved about uh the pandemic is having time to like sit down and catch up on people's stuff which is awesome uh and go back and and look at these different things because I mean, there's so many great roles. You have you have a great resume building, and it's like there's so many fun roles. And you've had what we were noticing too was you had such fun ways of like capturing characters and and uh, like making them your own, like and really like putting your stamp on stuff. I appreciate, which was, cool, which was super cool. <laughs> I think the the thing we loved the the, the <laughs> one of our favorites was the insecure role you did, where you were the the parking officer. I don't know why I'm saying it like I'm reminding you. Like, yeah. you know, the, the thing you did. Oh, wait, which um, one? Yeah, no, I remember, yeah. <laughs> but, but you had this thing, and then it came up again in a different episode of a different show where you, you're like, deliver your line, and you're like, you're getting the parking ticket. And then pff, you do this, like, immediate cut, like, <laughs> like, you'd say your line, and then you just immediately turned away and walked away in, like, a comically, it was just comically timed and done, and it cracked us up. And I think you did it. In that one was a fun one. Yeah, that, that it was, was super fun. That, one. It, 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 and it, it was a it was an interesting experience too because I was you know I was dressed up like a like a meter maid right like a parking cop, and it was in between takes and I was chilling inside the little meter mobile. Yeah, and this woman comes pulling up and she goes, "Hey, I'm your union rep. I just want to make sure you're doing okay with everything going on over here." And I'm like, "Oh, is this you know a SAG union rep?" No, that was a union rep for parking enforcement who was like <laughs> making sure I was doing okay, like signing everybody. I'm like, no, no, we're acting. And they're like, oh, oh, okay. She all turned bright red and drove off. And I was like, oh, really? I really passed the test. Yeah. I was sitting there like in between takes, just like, what the hell? Was, That's amazing. It was funny. It was a lot of fun. That's so great. Yeah. And that was cool because I got to I, I got to meet uh, Debbie Allen, who directed that one, and she was a lot of fun. And Issa Rae was very kind. Everybody, it, it, it was... um. It was a cool set, and I've been fortunate enough that all these little small roles, these little co-stars I've been booking, I've been on sets that have been very, um, I don't want to say, uh, just been kind and nice, you know what I mean? Because you always hear sometimes horror stories from people, but I've never had a bad experience, which has been a good thing, you know, which I count my count my lucky stars for. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, that goes, that goes a long way, and it, it would ruin the experience, especially, like, yeah, going into it, being excited to be in something like that, and then crushing it. Yeah, uh, yeah I love that you were sitting in the little, the little three, uh, the three wheel meter made car. Uh, it's fantastic. I had to do that as a job in college for like a semester. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was it was awful. It was an awful job. You got any terrible uh, stories? It was well. Here, I guess it was good and bad. It was okay, it, and I'll give you the the good and <laughs> more good. bad though, right? <laughs> it was mostly bad, but the good, the silver lining was that I worked the night shift for it, and so after like five o'clock, uh, most of the the different parking enforcements would be void. Like it, you wouldn't get certain parking things past five. So nobody, and the other thing was I was one of like the only people to work the night one where there might've been like five people during the day on at a time. I was like the only one. And so nobody knew what to expect in terms of a ticket count. So I would, okay. I would just avoid writing as many as possible. Like I would, I would they got just, nobody else to put you up against. So they thought you were like a grade on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, exactly. And like, I would, I'd sit there and be like, yeah, this guy's in a handicapped spot but I don't see anybody waiting. I'll just hang out and see if they move it. I'll see if they move it. And you were the hero. You were the hero that didn't ticket people. You know, I do it when it, did. when push came to shove and I was like, well, this is obviously messed up. Like, like I definitely have to get this guy. And you know, like now there's a handicapped person waiting for this spot. I got to ticket them for sure. Uh, you know, it's all like, I'd wait till the last minute. Um, but then, then they started putting me on day shifts also. And that's when I was like, oh, I would have to like, basically do it and run because i didn't want people to see me do give a ticket it's an awful job because you're just like dinging people for and like ruining their day your job is to enforce a city regulation that ruins people's days yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it was, rough job yeah it was like and it was all on campus too so it was like it was, it was an on-campus job so 
I was only ticketing like my peers. You know what I mean? Like so much worse. So much well, worse. See, in a school of three thousand people, they were gonna see me again. And then I, I, I can also imagine, like, even if it wasn't you that gave the ticket, your friends still knew you did that. So if they got a ticket, they'd be fucking pissed at you. Just like you know, wait, this is part of your clique. This is your crew. You fucked me over. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. What are you doing, man? You know my car. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't me. I promise. Yeah. I, didn't, I promise um speaking of college i didn't realize you you you're from out here right from uh san diego yeah i'm actually in san diego right now visiting my parents what oh nice. yeah very cool yeah. i was very able cool. to get vaccinated so i'm down here now did you uh, yeah hanging out with them um uh, did you get, my did brother you get came into twice? Twice? yeah i got my second one so lucky yeah so, so lucky. And, so lucky so lucky and my brother's down here too and my brother wasn't able to get vaccinated so we had to quarantine himself for like seven or eight days before he you know he stayed with my parents but yeah so mm -hmm. i'm down in san diego born and raised here so yeah i've been a socal guy my entire life yeah so have you have you always had that dream and like looking up to to los angeles always like I, when, <laughs> when, did, when did that acting bug get you i've always when? really really enjoyed acting um it's it was always i guess like you know you you do it in high school. I think the way, okay, okay, I'm gonna start over. Let me just start completely over here. So right, cut, my, cut the whole thing, cut the whole cut thing, the whole thing. No, cut, kidding. reset. <laughs> uh, we're done moving on, starting fresh. Uh, ninth grade, I accidentally signed up for a theater class, right? As my elective. Yeah. And I'd done it, I'd done it in middle school, and I just like being a ham. It wasn't really about the acting, it was just about like, look at me, I want attention in middle school, you know what I mean? Yeah. So ninth grade rolls around, I take the acting class and I fall in love with it. I was like, oh, I really like this. So I start taking it as my elective or one of my electives every year in high school. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to go to LA. I'm going to go to college because, you know, everybody's like, you got to go to college. In retrospect, I don't know if I would have reevaluated that or not. You know what I mean? But I feel you. Yeah. I go to college and I major in poli sci. I'm a pre-law major. And uh, I, but I somehow find my way to the theater department and I start doing shows and I minor in theater. And then, you know, I meet Allison, my wife, mm -hmm. and she's mm -hmm. there and she's going back to LA. And I'm like, you know what? I'm failing my con law classes anyways. You know, I probably, my GPA is pretty tanked and, you know, I'd have to do really well in the LSAT. I don't really want to be a lawyer. So I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to pursue what I really want to do. And that ended up being acting. Nice. You know, came, came out to LA and floundered for many years. Uh, and then finally started buckling down and, listening to my reps and starting to get better and things started opening up for me yeah you know? and then you got to work in law anyways in law enforcement <laughs> well, <laughs> you're like my degree but no, i don't know <laughs> it didn't pay. but in, in college i actually worked for the police department part-time did you yeah yeah nice. and nice. uh it was uh easy money it was doing traffic control and i used to take care of their horses so oh, cool you get hired as a civilian employee. You don't have any of the hardcore responsibility, but still making 20 bucks an hour in college, yeah. you know, doing all this stuff. And that, that was kind of a rough job to give up because it's like, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a police officer. You know what I mean? I don't want to do any of that. I want to go to LA and be an actor. So yeah. came up here, waited tables, couldn't stand waiting tables after a few years. And I started doing security work and now I do security work at universal studios. Oh, so nice. it's kind of cool. Yeah. No, that's super cool. Yeah. Um, is that new? Have you always been at Universal doing security? I I've nothing. been doing I've been doing that for quite a while. I've been doing okay. that since 2014. Okay. So. I knew you were doing security. I didn't realize it was I don't know if I knew it was at Universal. That's cool. Yeah, it's on the lot. It's and yeah. it's 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 interesting, you know. Uh um there was a time when I actually filmed something there and took a nap in my car and then just stayed in the lot, changed my <laughs> uniform and go to work. So we're graveyard, you know. How, how great. And there was one time I called in sick. Uh, and uh, my supervisor saw me coming out of my trailer the next yeah. day because I called him sick, so I was, I was on set there. So uh, it, I, feel, I feel like he's got to let that slide. He did. He let it go. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's That's funny. Yeah, it, and it's it's interesting being a lot and seeing how everything else is done too, uh, and what we deal with there. But yeah, so yeah. I know I know Universal Studios very well. Yeah. Yeah. What, what uh what was your did you have a um when you were going to school for law did you have a certain law you were like specific area you were trying to go into well when you're starting it i th there was i mean i never actually went to law school i was always the pre-law major so i have my major yeah. in political science which is a good oh, okay. precursor to law school do you know what i mean yeah so, okay, um, i gotcha, gotcha yeah but uh it, it's one of those things where yeah at that point i wasn't even sure what kind of law i wanted to do yeah oh, and it and then you got to sort of assess for yourself at that point like listen 
you know, in the last two years of my college, my GPA has gone down. I'm seeing myself in the theater department more than I'm seeing myself in the library. Um, yeah. I'm finding out this really isn't what I want to do. You know, I'm enjoying my, my political theory classes and those are fun and the, the, the history of it's fun. But when it comes down to these, these law classes I was taking at San Diego State, because they offer like calling law classes for poli sci majors. I'm like, this is not interesting to me. This is not captivating me. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe I don't have the mind for it. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, yeah. it's just, you sort of have that hard talk with yourself and you're like, if I do, if I do this and I'm miserable, I'm always going to re- regret not doing the other thing. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. That's why I moved up to LA and started acting. Did, did you start doing acting? And it was real slow. For the, I'm sorry, were you saying? Oh, no, no. But you started doing some acting stuff in, in, at uh, San Diego State though, right? Yeah, I, well, I was part of the theater department. I was doing a lot of acting there. I was, I did, um, I did some short films for a couple of friends. Um, and that's, I mean, that just cultivated, you know, me wanting to do it more and more and more. And you know, see myself on yeah. stage and I love doing it. And I love doing it for the other reasons than just hamming it up. I like, I enjoy the craft of it and I enjoy studying it and I enjoy yeah. doing it. This is, it's becoming so much more than just, you know, ego driven, watch me, I'm a crazy guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, so you were doing what, like plays and then were you doing comedy and stuff in, uh, in college also? I gave stand up a couple of tries in, uh, in college. I went to a couple of open mics with very mixed results. Yeah. They weren't mixed results. They were terrible results. <laughs> I don't want to say they're mixed results. But mo- the beginning of most stand up comedy. It was, it was not very good at all. It was, yeah. um, yeah, but you know, I, I tried it a few times and, once you do it, I guess, and you fail at it, and I've never, and they, I mean, I've seen you do stand up, and you're great, and I've seen, you know, I've seen Ashley do it, and you guys are great. It's, it's a, it's a sort of a skill set that, like, I'm a little bit jealous that you guys have that I wish I could cultivate a bit more because you're the ability to get up there and sort of just have a conversation, you know what I mean, and able to captivate an entire group of people in a way that's, you know, it's not presentational. It's like I'm just gonna chat with you like you're my friend. You know what I mean? It's yeah, really something yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. That yeah, and that's something to like develop too. Like that's it's hard. Like th- there's a weird balance of like trying to be conversational with people and then also just literally performing it and being like, no, no, you guys don't talk right now. Right. So it's yeah, it's but man, there's been a lot of rough nights along the way. So uh <laughs> yeah. It's 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 a growing thing for sure. You care to uh, share your uh your roughest night with me? Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if there's like one that stands out in particular. Um, there's, I feel like I've had drunk people in the audience before and I didn't even realize there's like I was being heckled until I watched the tape. <laughs> and then I saw like the tape from the back of the room and I was like, oh, I didn't even hear this person from the stage, but <laughs> like they were commenting on bits and stuff. And I'm like, OK, well, that. I'm, maybe I'm glad I didn't hear because it, it would have probably deterred me and I would have addressed it and gotten into some weird confrontation. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, there's been, there's been nights where things don't work, but I also, I think I've just developed that weird thick skin of like, yeah, it's a learning process. And like, if it doesn't work, if I can find a piece of it that does, I, it wasn't a complete loss. Right. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I can't, I don't know if it's, it would probably be some of the early, early, um, st- like stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a whole lot that stands out as like really crushing. Um, I'm sure there were though. <laughs> <laughs> You've compartmentalized probably, them in your brain. I probably you can't just quite had a remember. couple of drinks afterwards to where I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I, th- I think is- I, I think I, I got good at at compartmentalizing it and just dropping it and moving past it though. And I think that was the the easiest way to just keep going with stand up is that I was like, all right, yeah. So certain things didn't work, but if I can take this nugget, then it wasn't a complete failure. And yeah. take that to the next thing. Take a lesson from it and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's weird. It's weird not having that outlet lately. You know, we've we've definitely turned things more digital and just trying to produce other stuff to stay out. But uh, you know, it's it's weird not having outlets for that or 
any anything like that right now especially you know, something no- you guys would go to it's it's like it would be your go-to you'd be doing it multiple times a week even you know some weeks yeah. and to not have that's a big part of your life that just doesn't exist at this moment like where's that outlet you know yeah and i know some people are doing it but it's just like i don't know what the end goal is right now um there's not a lot of shows it's more like open mics but yeah and then like improv you know we used to have an improv show every other sunday that we would go to and and, and perform and that's gone so it's interesting, but what it's done is definitely got us back in class, you know, and we've been taking more online classes, which is cool. That's good. Um, yeah. And just trying to, you know, taking those Zoom classes, you know, just trying to stay moving. I got a friend who's wanted me to sign up for a Zoom class and that's, it's like a, uh, it's like a, a trigger I'm not willing to pull yet. You know, I should be getting back into it. I should, you know, you should always be in class doing something or studying somehow, but it just seems like a, and this is me making an assumption. I could be totally wrong since I haven't taken them. Do you know what I mean? But it mm-hmm. just seems like so difficult to have to break that barrier, you know, over a Zoom conversation. Because you know how, like, when you do Zoom conversations in the first in the first point, like, like I do, a, uh, I occasionally do a poker game over Zoom online with mm-hmm. some friends. You're always overly animated. You're always, you know, exerting a bit more to try to get your point across than you would if you were just face to face with somebody. Yeah, and I feel like. I wouldn't want any of that to carry over into what I'm doing acting wise. And then the paranoia of like, is that going to be a stuck thought with me moving forward? Stupid yeah. shit like that, you know? Yeah, definitely. I get that. Oh. Um, yeah. It's, it, I don't know. It's interesting. I think for us, we're just trying to like, just keep driving out. Cause you know, and trying to make that some of those next steps for us too. And uh, you know, it's also, I, I don't know. Are you, are you, dealing with many zoom auditions has that come up for you i know i keep i haven't had a, i haven't had a single zoom audition i've had yeah. self tapes yeah, right yeah um but no zoom auditions but it's funny because i see friends of mine online are getting tons of them so I, I don't know what's going on um i haven't had to experience one yet um i haven't even really had that many self tapes it's been pretty pretty damn slow for me yeah um, in terms of auditioning cool. luckily i got called back from one and I booked I booked uh, the other two so which is which has been nice but the in terms of quantity of auditions it hasn't hasn't been up like it was used to it also yeah. when you do the self tapes like it's so much you don't have I guess the uh, fear that you would going into the casting office mm-hmm. right you're obviously mm-hmm. there but you also don't have the input that they can give you which is yeah. such a negative because casting directors there's always that old adage they want you to win and they do you know yeah. you go into a casting office and they're like that was good but did you think about doing it this way and it's something you never thought of and it made your audition because you got their input totally i i, I completely you can't agree do that, that over a cell tip yeah, yeah it's it, it's definitely pros and cons because it you know yes you can do it you know five times and, and perfect it and, and send your best take but at the same time, it's like, yeah, the, the casting director knows exactly what they're looking for at a certain point. And I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at redirects. If you tell me what to do, I, I can generally, yeah. you know, give you something. Especially if redirection. You know, close. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, if you give me some If redirection is one of your strengths, like you're saying it is, you know what I mean? Right. How can you showcase that if you're not there? And that's such a, yep. and, you know, redirection is something that casting directors test for, you know what I mean? Even like, like they'll say, we just want something totally off the cuff sometimes or do it a totally different way. If you can prove that you're great at redirection, especially for smaller co-star roles, mm-hmm. that could be what gets it for you because all they want to know is that like, hey, can you say these two or three lines a different way or can, like, as long as you can do that redirection, that could be the job because yeah. there's a lot of actors out there who really can't do that, you know, and or they have a lot of issues with that. If you can prove that point, it's like impossible to do in self tapes. So, right. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. And I think that's kind of where some of that, that improv background and stuff is nice and why they keep a lot of people push you to go get improv training. Cause it, it does help you out with things like the redirect of just like, okay, what else can I, how else can I do this? Like, there's no, there's not always a perfect way. So to be able to do it multiple ways, I think is beneficial. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, you you went through UCB, right? Did you do the UCB? Route? I did the first level of UCB. Uh, hold yeah. Let me turn on a light. I'm going to turn on a light real fast. Hit, hit the lights on, man. It's starting to get sure. dim. No. Hold up. Uh, no, you're good. It looks like it went out. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Hold on, hold on. There we go. There we go. I'm getting no, bright. Now, a there bit. we go. All right. Uh, I did the first face, man. Beautiful shame. Do you see he's sweating? Uh, I did the first level of UCB. I was actually planning on getting into groundlings 
yeah. uh, but, uh, to, to go through that course, but that was right when COVID hit. So I decided yeah. I can't do that now. Yeah. But I did enjoy the first level. Um, I should have gone on with it a bit farther. I was always going to go back to it. You know, if you don't do it in a certain amount of time, you have to start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I thought about moving on to Growlings and giving that a shot. And I still plan to when everything yeah. opens up again, hopefully. Yeah. I know. I think I, I did UCB through their program and I've always just been interested in trying to either a second city or groundlings just to kind of well, like round out some of the different things that they do. Um, so who knows, maybe we'll all jump in together. I know Ashley was talking about it. Maybe we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll group sign up. That'd be a lot of fun. That would be actually a lot of fun. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know how much, like, I know you, I've always known, you to like have that comedy background and stuff so i just like especially through some of the the work you produce and just the style of stuff you do you can definitely tell you have like comedy chops and, and interest in that stuff well, i appreciate it thank you yeah and we did a lot i did a lot of improv in college too and that was a lot of fun so, oh yeah yeah we had a whole little um whole little group called i ate a pie um, yes gave ourselves a fake frat name You're right yeah all, always funny when you would wear the fucking sweater at a party you go to a frat party Oh yeah, bro. I've heard of them. No, you haven't, man. But cool. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> people react in a certain way. It was and that, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and and improv you, really did help. You guys recruiting at all? You guys, you guys rushing anybody this yeah, spring? Yeah, man. Can, can I rush, bro? I don't yeah. know, man. Can you? Yeah. yeah yes, sure. and you know, yeah. You're right. Yes, and me something right now. Yeah. Yeah. But, we had uh, our our group in in college. We had a sketch group called Seeing You Tonight uh based on it was uh, christopher newport university so it was cnu but then we would do like <laughs> and we would basically do like snl style sketches and stuff uh and like a weekend update and all that and it would be but it was it was always like we'll be seeing you tonight and like it was cheesy but it was fun and it, people eat that up in a college environment too you know I, huh. I i know when we did our first our first semester of shows we wouldn't get very many people we get like 20 21 people show up at a show yeah and then like through the course of the 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 five years i was at college uh two senior years mm-hmm. and the course of the five years i was at college then you know the it would start filling up we get like 150 people coming 175 people coming into those shows and it turned into something great and a lot of fun we learned a lot we would uh uh chip in and hire professional teachers and shit like that and it would just it really became a cool community where in college you got the opportunity to learn more professionally about comedy too you know yeah they really teach like college courses on that you know right it's, totally yeah so it was it was a lot of fun it That's was really super. cool so you, you guys would just bring in people from the from wherever and to come in and teach though like a couple of times there's professional teachers that came in to help us um and uh yeah and we, we also we would do a they, this is sort of like after i left on my end of my fifth year they would go to like regional competitions and stuff. And it's sort of like that improv crew's taken over and they're still, it's kind of cool because we were like the founding group, you know what I mean? Yeah, like my freshman yeah. year. And it's still I had to pie San Diego state, you know, in 2021. And we started that shit back in 2005. That's 2006. Awesome. So yeah. You guys were like the founding, the founding fathers of I had pie. We were. Yeah. And Brandon Mayer, uh, who was the guy who started it. We call him the Godfather. Nice. And, uh, he's like a sports agent now. He doesn't even do improv. So. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't. So we didn't start our sketch group. Our sketch group had already started, and it's like, I I feel like, I mean, any anybody tuning in to watch is gonna be like, we're the best group. But no, during like my four years, maybe like the two years before me, like there was like a six year span where we're like we were the the heyday of of this group. I feel like uh because i had gone back and seen other shows and and then we also like had to move theaters and the space was different and everything just was different uh so i didn't i can't claim that creation but i do have one like me and my buddies have a claim to fame for our school and it was it was the blue boys which was uh just where we painted our chest and face for football games for our d3 football games (laughs) like not even like like it, the community park. Yeah. like it didn't matter but like yeah. but it became a thing like we were we were they put us on t-shirts like like are you serious oh yeah you guys, we became, were like, you guys became a damn institution you guys were a brand a thing like yeah. people and then like um yeah i mean other people would start painting uh themselves and and like it was totally like the president of the university would show up to games and he's like oh they can move 
there'd be like certain places you can't normally stand, but they're like, these guys are cool. These guys are good. And like, we got let onto the field a couple of times. And it was like, it was ridiculous. And, um, uh, and it still goes on today. Like there's a- so you carried so, so now they got their own blue boys who come out. You started the legacy. You guys are the OGs, yeah. the original blue boys. That's that's we really- are. But what's funny is that we saw somebody on Instagram try to post like they were the original. I was like, F that guy. He is not. And this was Smack like him in place. This is like several years after we graduated. And he tried to claim, and it was like an article right up, and I was like, uh-uh, nope. I was like, we and I like, I don't even know if I. Like, I'm legally yeah. contesting this statement right here. This is yeah. wrong, you know. There was, I wanted to send photos, but I was like, that's petty. <laughs> I was like, I I've been out of school too. I would have been that level of petty. You should have. You know I, what I mean? I thought about it. Yeah. Uh, I might have. Who knows? <laughs> I don't think I did. I think I reserved myself, but I got dang close. Or I don't know. It was just. Or uh, you should have somebody else do it for you, so it doesn't look like you're being an ass. You're yeah. Like, Old school fan, like you're on. Like I knew these guys, you know. I'm gonna go back and do it. This guy's probably graduated by now. He's totally out of out of school, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, remember back when you were in school and you said this? <laughs> oh man, he'd be like, where's this coming from, man? I'm just like, I'm a, a stockbroker now. Yeah, yeah, he's off doing some other shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my bad. Sorry, man. Sorry. Um. So that was like our our claim to fame. Um. I don't know. <laughs> It's nice to have. It's nice to have that look back on. Um, that's cool though. I get a pie. Love it. Yeah. Um, do you ever go back and watch it? Do you guys ever like? Are you still connected to the group at all? I mean, I have some friends who are still in the group. I'm not really connected to it. Uh, yeah. I've I've had. I mean, I've I've wanted to. I've wanted to travel back and just catch one of their shows. I mean, I know? don't know why you would be necessarily. I just you know. Well, just, I, mean, I mean, it's been it's been a while that we've been out of. Yeah, school, I mean, so it's wait. still something. It's still something you think about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, like you'll see, like there's a Facebook page. It's like, oh, that's totally. still active. This is still going on. Like, yeah, yeah I wouldn't. I'd want to go check it out. You know, but I, I haven't. It's, I would have to have a reason to be in San Diego. I'm not just going to drive down to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I were in San Diego and a show happened to be going on, I would definitely check it out. But, you know, in the in COVID age, it's obviously not happening. And there, There's a part of me that wants to, like, to reach out and be like, guys, listen, I've been out of school for a while. I've been doing this thing. You should listen to my podcast. I have these people on who are like, can give you advice if you want to go further with this stuff. And they'd be like, get out of here, grandpa. <laughs> You know what I want to hear do. your stupid ways. We're doing TikTok. You should, go back, you, should, you should go back to your old college with your blue, your blue belly, your blue face. Yeah. Go back as the original blue boy and ask for your spot, your moniker, your throne. I want it yes. back. I am here <laughs> for the next season. The D3 season played at the community park, right? That's what I'm sure that's where they're doing the football yeah. games. And just yep. be like, just be just, just own it again, you know? Yeah. Oh man. The return of the king. You know what's brutal about that is like we went through so many bad paint brands that to get to the one that made sense. A lot of rashes. Well, no, what some lead poisoning. It maybe? wouldn't come off. Oh shit! There were some brands that just like would not come off, and you literally have to shower for like an hour or two, like to try to get it off, which is insane. You're irritating your skin, trying to rub it all oh, off. Oh, seriously? Yeah, you'd be like, you'd be, you go from blue to red. It would just. <laughs> It wasn't any better. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. And now they just walk in there and they just take a page out of our book. And now everything's great. They didn't put their dues in. As well. No, they just followed the example you said after you had everything figured out. Yeah. Picked it up and went with it. <laughs> You're like the guy who invented the wheel. And now we all just ride with the wheel. Just ride with it. I love how some people are going to, they're listening to this and they're like, is this still an entertainment podcast? Cause this guy is just off on paint. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Side about- isn't that what podcasts are for though? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All uh, right. Let's get back to the acting. Oh, it's, uh- it's totally fine. I'm loving it. It's just funny. I'm just thinking like from, <laughs> from everybody else. They're like, what the hell is this guy on? And he's just on a paint talk. Um, but no, it's all good. I love tangents. We start getting into the different brands you need to buy, whether you know, depending on what shade you want. Uh, right, right. By the yeah. end of it, we have them listed up. We're making samples, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sherman Williams. Uh, <laughs> the color, the color code is zero zero FF two five six. But don't uh, get it at Home Depot. Don't get it at yeah. Home Depot, man. The Go Lowe's got some paint. Yeah. <laughs> um, you see, you see, you know this because you did the research. You know swatch. to go to Lowe's, not Home Depot. Huh. I, I hand out swatches to the next guy. That's what they <laughs> pass down to like the the next guys. They're like. 
you are the next blue guy, and here's a swatch to take to Lowe's, so you can you two can blue. Um, <laughs> you two can blue. You two can blue. Um, man, yeah, let's talk about let's talk let's talk more about you because this is this is the podcast is more about it's not for me to talk about my past. <laughs> Uh, it's to celebrate you, but let's uh, let's talk about some of your your roles because you've had some super fun stuff. Uh, we, we watched a bunch of it. We've been binging your your stuff. We watched uh, Sorry for Your Loss recently, which was a fun scene where you got to do dance moves and choreography. Um, you know, we we chalked out your your uh, Criminal Minds, where you got a, a, attacked and got to play an awesome dead body, which is super fun. Yeah, dead bodies are fun. That makeup was intense too. That was like an it hour and a half every day. Yeah, was it really? And, yeah, it took like an hour, I think, hour, 15 minutes. It many, could have been 45, and I could just be thinking it was an hour and 15. It probably felt it took, like three hours. It was quite a while. And it was uh, it, it was it was interesting, though, because as dramatic as it looks, it wasn't that uncomfortable. They got the, the stuff that we use is it's actually, I mean, it's you know it's there. You feel it's there. It's not yeah. the nicest stuff to have on, but it's, it's comfortable enough. Yeah. yeah. And for those who haven't seen it, like, he he basically he got attacked by a wolf, a werewolf, perhaps, uh and then you have to watch the episode to see you have to watch the episode to find out guys it's a mystery but yeah you had like the whole gash on the neck like and, and everything but that was super cool you, you had to do that how many days did you work on that that was three three days so and then, yeah like an hour and a half every day that's crazy yeah there was there's you know different locations and different scenes that was three days that was um and that was a that was an interesting one too uh uh it was a audition was totally different than what we filmed um hmm. And uh, it was, it was, I was happy to get that one. I didn't, I, it was interesting because my friend from college is actually the casting assistant on that, on that show. She goes, Oh, like there's this role that came up and I totally thought of you, you know? And I was like, Oh God, thank you so much. And you come in and obviously still have to audition, you know, it ended up working out. I ended up getting it. And uh, I was super stoked about that. Cause that's one of those rite of passages too. A lot of people book that show. Yeah. So I wanted, you know, and that was was um, your first credit. No, first credit was a show called Casual on Hulu. That was your first? Oh, okay. First. I had the timeline messed up. Yeah, that was, that was like my first, well, that was uh, one of my first, like the first that was like the re- a real union gig. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. was that. And uh, then I followed that up. That, then it was uh, Insecure after that. And then uh, I got to uh, shoot Rebel. And that was cool. I had a couple of scenes with Method Man in that. That was a lot of fun. Nice. A lot of fun working with Method Man. Really kind guy really really uh down really down to earth and it was uh it was a lot of fun filming and it was quick and everybody was so professional on that set everybody had everything down so quickly it's like boom 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 you know it's it's interesting to go to these sets where everything's just so coordinated and ready to go you finish it so quickly you know yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome it's casual it like one the other scene one. here i'm sorry oh i think casual was the other one i was thinking of where you had the the, the ken hodges turnaround where you're like you've been served and then it was something about i might have had something like that it was it something happened. You, it was something and it was just like it was almost the exact same thing i was like he's putting his stamp on this thing whether he knows it or not he's doing a thing and it's hilarious and he's it's like it's this thing i revert to when i'm nervous maybe who the hell knows right but it but it worked it, 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 we cracked up and it was like we're like oh this like it it drew a nice attention to a, a, a what could be like a coast you know a smaller role um but I thought, he, I thought it was like, you put a stamp on it. It's great. I remember auditioning for that. And it's for those, for ones like that, like when you do auditions for those, those, those tiny roles, there's always people who try to make it so much bigger than it mm-hmm. needs to be, you know? Yeah. And you yeah. see that and you, you can have a phenomenal actor, you know, and I know people who are phenomenal actors, but they'll be playing up this small role so much. It's like, it doesn't need to be like that. Just do what the story is dictating you to do go from there if you put yeah. a little twist or a little stamp on it whatever you want to do a little button perfect yeah. if they tell you to get rid of it just get rid of it you know yeah. if you, you're able to showcase that you're able to do that and take that direction that's when you start getting those smaller roles and they start building up people are like okay this guy can handle him himself on set let's see what else is going on you know what i mean yeah so. well i mean they, they always talk about it is coast coast star roles are some of the harder roles because you you don't want to do too much with it and you got to you got to just hit your mark. You got to, and kind of do what's on the page. And like you said, people try to do too much with it a lot of times and get themselves out of contention for it. Um, so it's, it's and then people like, will beat themselves up about not getting it to it. Like it could have been anything. You could have been three inches too short or three inches too tall. It's one of those roles that is, li- you look too similar to the guy you're playing opposite with. Who's one of the series regulars. And that's more important than, 
So people are like, oh, why am I not getting anything or this and that? And it's like, it really has not, it could have nothing to do with you at all. You know, yeah. people still yeah. beat themselves up over it. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. so many factors. Um, yeah. What was it like, like booking that first one that, that for casual? That was, so I that had, like that. so you, that was your first role, right? That was the first one. Dude, do you want to, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, not the long winded, medium winded backstory on that. So I had, I was feeling like, so when I moved up to LA, I thought I was way better than I was, right? I thought, you know, you, you know, think you're a better actor yeah. when you get up here and we, you have an inflated idea. And then you sort of like really get punched in the gut. Where you're like, okay, I really need to get better at what I'm doing here. Uh, you know, when just you come from I ate a pie and seeing you tonight, you have a little bit of inflated ego. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of this inflated. And then no, you know, that's just, everybody just comes to LA. Yeah. Regular yeah. Shit. yeah. So I had got, I, I remember I got signed with a great agency. I'll just leave them unnamed for now. My manager sure. hooked me up with a good agency. And then um, I went out on a ridiculous amount of auditions that year. Something like I was getting like two or three auditions a month. Oh, wow. And I didn't book a single thing that year. And this is like, this is seven months after I got here. And then, you know, you're not, you don't book anything for a year. The auditions are going to dry up. And yeah. then I, I think I auditioned once or twice the entire year, the following year. And I remember talking to my managers and they're like, well, you need to do A, B, and C. And you just sort of don't believe it. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to invest in it. You're not, not sure if it's the right track. You know, my managers have been in the business for like 35 years. I should be listening to them. Right. Yeah. Like, listen, drop your agent. We'll get you a smaller agent. We'll find you one and then do what we're saying. The moment I start listening to what they're saying, you know, then I start getting these auditions. I start performing well, not necessarily booking the auditions that are coming in, but showcasing myself in a way that goes, okay, that we can bring this guy in for something else, or we can mm -hmm. call him in for a different role. Once I start listing that, actually taking the notes that are being given, growing up a little bit, you know, in your own head about <clears throat> where you're at, not being delusional about anything, mm -hmm. not getting too downtrodden either, not kicking yourself in the butt if nothing's happening, which is what I was doing a lot of. Like, why is this happening? I should just give up on this. And then when you get that first one, it sort of reinvigorates, it reinvigorates you a little bit. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, mm -hmm. I got the first one. I remember my agent called me and I just signed with this new agency. It's mm -hmm. uh, NCA, it's who I'm with now. They just got me. I signed with them two months before. It was the first audition they sent me on. And they go, oh, you're pinned for it. And I thought that meant I got it. Yeah. So I started calling my, my family and my friends. I was like, oh yeah, I booked a role. And they're like, oh, we're just waiting to hear back on the pin. And I'm my idiot that was like, oh shit, I started telling everybody I got it. You know what I mean? Luckily oh, yeah, it came yeah. through and I ended up getting it. But I was worried that you know, if it fell through, that would have been no good. It really would have made me look like a, a tool, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it was a cool experience filming it. I had, it was quick day. Just, I think I was there for three hours, mm -hmm. two and a half, three hours in and out quick scene. You sort of see what everything's like. And, you know, it's your first, ex it was my first experience in like a real professional set. So in between takes, I'm standing around and my stand is wondering why I'm standing next to him. You know what I mean? So you sort of, yeah. sort of yeah. start understanding things. And then, uh, the next audition I had, I believe was insecure. And I got that, you know, and I was like, this is great. I was able to book rebel later on that year, which was a lot of fun. Then I went sort of dark, wasn't getting a whole lot of auditions. Things were kind of slowing down and then booked criminal minds. I got superstore. Then I get a call from agent superstore wants to bring me back. And then, you know, just the other month, they're like, they want to bring you back again, which is a lot of fun. It's good. It's a good feeling when that happens. Yeah, and then that's super cool. Sorry for your loss. That was, um, I remember the casting office there, real nice, like all these casting directors, like just like the chillest people in my experience, nicest people really want you to, everybody's so terrified. There's such a resource to utilize. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They want yeah. you to succeed. Just don't annoy them. Don't like email them every second. You know what I mean? Or hit them up right. on text or spam their Facebook, but they're in a group of people that want to see you succeed. And I remember I had gotten pinned uh, twice for the Mindy project and I it couldn't come through. I just didn't get the roles and I was mm -hmm. really bummed. And it was um, the same casting office and the casting assistants like, we're going to bring him back. Don't worry. And they did. They brought me back for Sorry for Your Loss, which is a new show they were casting. And then I ended up booking that. I think I was the first one to audition that day. It was an early audition. And I thought I blew it. You know, it was a, it's a short little, I think I'm, I'm in the show for all of two minutes and eight seconds, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe two, at minute 45 to two, I'm you know, not sure, but it's a small little dance thing. And mm -hmm. I was like, I, in my head, I thought I blew it. I was like, no, you did what you did. You didn't exaggerate anything. You didn't fake anything. You played it as real as you wanted to play it. And I got it. And I was like, okay, great. You know, and it's yeah. sort of like those, those things sort of build your confidence and 
make you want to keep going, you know, make you want to keep trucking. Things can slow down or you don't get something for a few months or auditions are slowing down. Nothing's coming in. You got to find ways to keep yourself motivated. Yeah. And those are the things that sort of keep you motivated networking with people. And I met, I met a cool director who offered to put me into a script. So hopefully that gets filmed in a few months and it's, it's going to be interesting. And you start writing, you start, you start doing your own sketches, anything to sort of keep momentum and keep the fun and keep, mm-hmm. so it's not fun and you don't want to do it anymore. You shouldn't be doing it. You know, you right, got to yeah. continue to like, it needs to continue to be fun. And you, you need to want to continue making it your dream. So if you don't, then you might as well give it up. I don't know yeah. if that sounds morbid or whatever, but. I was rambling no. too much about that. No, that's oh, it was great. That was great, uh, and and you're right. And and you know, if you're not having fun with it, pivot. Also, you know, like I think there are sometimes you, that you don't that you're like, I'm not having fun. I I don't want to do this ever again. Like I don't want to do this anymore. And sometimes, like especially if you've been doing it a while, like just pivot. Make you know, do something. Do something in in entertainment and stuff that is fun. You know, if that means yeah you know, doing a different kind of class or, or doing a different kind of networking or something, reconnect with some other friends in the industry, like shake it up without to make it fun again. Uh, Cause it is, it, it's always going to be up and down. That's an excellent point. It's always going to be up and down. And I think so many of us have thought about quitting at one point or another, where you're like, this isn't working anymore. And um, I think everybody has, and a I think we all life. still continue to think that too. There's always going to be you know? a little bit of a drought and I, you know, I've talked with other friends who've, you know, had a lot of success and then had an off year and they were like, what's going on? Like, am I going to have to go be a lawyer? <laughs> you know, like, like, great. And and then you, you know, then you find out ways to, and now he's working again and like crazy. And, you know, and like I said, you know, you're, you got all this stuff going on. So you just find ways to, to keep it fun uh, and build momentum. And I think that's one thing I've found too, is like, when I, whenever it's slow for us, I feel like, you know, I start writing and filming more. And I'm like, I'm slow. And, and, you know, it may, it's not going to be the thing that gets me, you know, breakthrough or whatever on some new opportunity, but it it creates, if nothing else, it always creates momentum. I always feel like when I'm creating for some reason, whatever, if, even if it's just putting it out into the universe, like it, I start seeing stuff come back and it's weird. I'm like, it's not that anybody's seeing the sketch that's calling me in off of it. It's just this weird thing of like putting stuff out there and it's coming back in some weird way. Um, But yeah, that's exactly what it is. You're putting it out into ether and you're getting a bit back in return. And I like what you said about pivoting. I mean, that's super important too. Like there's always going to be moments where you feel down. And I guess what I'm trying to say is don't always feel like you have to be super happy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the overarching theme of what you want to, yeah. The overarching theme of what you're doing should make you happy. And if you have to pivot and if you have to, I don't want to say have to, because sometimes it's fun just to do something else in that room, totally. or, you know, move yeah. on to it's, it, you want to make sure that, that overall, whatever you're doing is leading to your happiness and not leading you to, to more uh, depression, you know, right. so if it is, then get <laughs> out of it. It's, but rule it's okay to have depressive moments. It's okay to have depressive moments. It's not okay to be depressed all the time with it. You know? Yes. Yeah. It should be making you happy more than making you sad or stressed. That's if you, if you take anything away from this episode, don't do the things that make you depressed. <laughs> don't do just don't do, keep doing the things that make you depressed. Um, but yeah, yeah just, it. it's a simple, a simple. I've enlightened yeah. you, right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, have you it's, have it, you been it, with this same uh, manager this like since early on? Like I've been with my managers uh, since 2010. Wow, uh, the entire time That's I was here, awesome. and they uh, it, they were. They were a good group of guys, uh, especially uh, Nelson, who I should have listened to. I should have started listening to him much earlier than I really started taking heed of what the of the advice he was giving me. You know. Yeah, that's funny. I definitely was, have and, some it, of those moments. Yeah, and it's also the benefit too is when you have a manager who, you know, I was like shit, man, I've been with you for, I've, you know, I was with him for six years and hadn't made, it, hadn't made him a single dime, but right. he's still taking time out of his day to talk to me and make sure I know what I'm doing and coaching me and trying to invigorate me to want to succeed. And then that, you know, I still haven't paid back the investment, the things that he's given me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I hope to one day, but 
just just to know that you know he's, he has other clients that are much more successful like all managers do who keep but hey if i call him he he'll listen he'll answer he'll call back and that's sign of representation that really wants to make sure you're on the right footing you know totally he I gave mean, me a call cool. after a he he gave me a call after a, 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 I found out I was, I was released from a pin for a show I wanted. And he gave me a call, make sure I'm all right. You know, like, you okay? Yeah. I, I was really bummed because I really wanted this one. And, you know, he he'll put things into perspective for me. Like, listen, you made it into the room had all the people, and then you got that far on it. You should take it away as a win. Something will come farther down the line with this show or this office and not this officer show something else. And he took the time to give me a call at nine 30 at night. Let me know that. So Things That's like that cool. really yeah. mean a lot to me. Yeah. That's so. super cool. Um, yeah. I, I remember I had an, uh, one of my first agents out here. He, he was a commercial agent because uh, I didn't have a theatrical for a long time. Uh, and then, you know, I, I had a commercial guy and I'll never forget. He was like, at that time I had my hair in like the faux hawk, uh, you know, the, the 2000s faux hawk. And, and he, he sat me down one day. He's like, listen, nobody's doing that anymore. And I have like... <laughs> to like outwear this is like historically for me i always i have a tendency to outwear fashion i like past the time okay. that everybody else moved on and so he was just kind of like you're still holding done. on to it man you got it's the nostalgia and, yeah. and instead of listening i was just like you don't know man <laughs> like it was just like I, I, was, I was young and dumb and like i was like and i went and got another age like an angsty teenager like you don't get me yeah yeah and eventually like not right away but eventually i i wasn't going out and i moved on and got another agent and and uh you know that's fine and and um but it's just it's just funny it's just one of those stories that like i didn't know I, at the time i just i didn't know i was young and dumb and you know i didn't realize how much he was trying to help me and it's one of those things looking back i'm like Ah, yeah, they're all they're they're always trying to do the right thing, and generally they they know what they're talking about. They've most of them have been doing it longer than we had at that point, right? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, but um, no, that's cool. Yeah, Especially when he signs you, and he's been doing it longer than you've been alive. You know what I mean? Then it's like, yeah, I should be listening. To yeah, him. I should listen up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah. Um, no, that's cool, man. You, know, you gotta, you gotta, it seems like you got a good team around you and that's, it's important, you know, just to have good people, good yeah. people you can talk to and that pick up the phone and stuff when you, when you call. So that's, uh, yeah. that's awesome. Um, so I'll, I'll wrap it up cause we, we are, we're coming up on time and, but I want to, I want to end on something fun that I was coming across, uh, earlier today. So I was going, I was going back through special skills, this, the fun special skills section. Do you ever, do you, do you recall ever putting a, uh, like a weird special skill? Have you ever, have you ever put something on your, like either that it's so outlandish or just like, can't believe I thought I could do that. Okay. I have a story. <laughs> I love um, this. Th there's a couple of skills. I put slalom on my, my thing once, which is like a long board thing. And okay. I, I, do you know what that is? I thought slalom, I was thinking slalom, slalom skiing. Like word, but I, no. Yeah, well, I thought it was a longboarding thing. That's stupid. So I took that off. But here, here's a story about special skills. I put down that I um, knew how to do an English accent, right? Yes. Oh, great. And uh, there's this idea, like when you're younger, oh, yeah, I can do an English accent. Like, because uh -huh. you feel like you can do any accent. But you really can't unless you've been trained on doing an English accent. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it, I'll put it down there. So I got an audition. This is my older agent. One of the many auditions that I failed at. <laughs> I get an audition where the guy has to have an English accent. I go in. It's for a commercial. Uh, it, it was some um, commercial for a video game. And uh, I was depending on uh, my girlfriend, who's my wife at the time, to be able to, hey, if I ever need help with English accents, she can coach me the night before. Right. She was, you know, trash. She went out with the girls that night and was too messed up to be able to help me. <laughs> so I go the next day to this audition. And I'm doing this. I'm like, yeah, this is all right. This is an English accent. You know, I, I kind of sound like, um, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I get in there. I do it. The casting director looks at me and goes, uh, okay, like, may, maybe you can do it in English accent now. And I was like, oh, God. Like, <laughs> oh, it was no. so mortifying where you're like, you're standing there and you're like, I just did an English accent. So you sort of like, okay, you know what I mean? And then you start over, you try to make the English accent more pronounced. And then now, like, I, I spat 
spit. I caught, like I caught the spit during the audition. Oh And it no. was so mortifying. And that office never thing. I took it off my special skills immediately. It was a total like Joey Tribbiani moment where he like said he could speak French. And that's one of those yeah. things where I went through my entire list of special skills. And unless I knew, unless I genuinely had that damn skill, uncheck the box totally. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But man that's my I, story. Yeah. it was one of so i i just went through like today and, and like took a bunch of stuff off because it's one of those things like i think i set up so long ago and i just never looked at it again and i was like and i i think i probably adjusted it some but then for some reason i still thought i could do certain things and i i look right. back with just like such a a like realistic high today and i was like why did i think i could do like like ice hockey and precision driving and like (laughs) high diving you know like i like i can barely do a dive i could i could dive off the (laughs) side side of the pool but if you put me on a diving board it's ugly like like there was just so many things i was like why did i think i could do this like oh man is there a box for belly flop instead of the dive i would have checked it twice yeah it would have been there yeah but there is, yeah, it, there is think, some, yeah, there's just some just, stuff on there and like, oh man, it's so It's a specific. young person's mistake. Yeah. It's a young person's mistake. I think when you're, you're, you're between 18 and 25 or whatever, and you're coming here and you're like yeah. precision driving. I'm a great motherfucking driver. Check <laughs> box, you know, like <laughs> firearms. Exactly. I've held prop guns yeah. in high school. They were plastic, but oh. I held them check box you know what i mean like oh high dive i know how to swim i can doggy paddle check box and like (laughs) right you can't do any of those things yeah you know archery i've had those suction cup or like bow and arrow sets as a kid (laughs) when i was got it four i was bought calm with that check box it's like i had i had snowmobile on there i've never seen a snowmobile in real life I've, now, where was the thought process in that? Is what I want to know. It's like, so it's like, like, are you thinking like, is it just like a go? I'm, so I, I mean, like, I've I've ridden jet skis before, and like, and I've ridden dirt bikes before. So I figured, how much harder could a snowmobile be? Uh, but if I saw one, I probably wouldn't know how to start it. So, is that really fair? <laughs> it's coming off. It's coming off. Snowboarding? No, I can ski. <laughs> I can ski, so I assumed I could snowboard. They're different. Still, to this day, I've never snowboarded. So I was like, that's coming off. I did that with, you know, I would I would longboard skateboard, you know? And I thought, oh, yeah. fuck, I can snowboard if I can go down. totally different, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's one of those things. Like, I think everybody needs to go back and look at me. Like, because you don't want to. Because it's really rare. They're going to be like, oh, shit, we need a precision archery guy who speaks German. Yeah. But that's the thing. If yeah. you have those two things listed, there's going to be four of you do you know what i mean so yeah. you're gonna be called in yeah it's not like oh when are they ever gonna call me in for this esoteric thing it's like we well, are clicking the esoteric box they're gonna yep. call you in because there's only three or four of you motherfuckers who can do it <laughs> so don't do it you know yeah totally <laughs> totally i mean there's, there's yeah. so much like you go a to c with it where i'm like they're like cycling and you're like yeah i can ride a bike cool and then they're like and downhill mu- mountain biking you're like sure <laughs> same thing and you're like no it's not the same it's thing just like a bike yeah. it is not downhill mountain biking is not the same as riding a bike down like in your head at the time you're like, like i can do it all though baby you know what i mean do that. down down the list and and when you're filling yeah. it out when you're when i can eat a dozen donuts in 10 minutes i'll do that yeah and especially when you fill it out when you're young like you just want every every chance you can so you're like yeah i can do that i can definitely Put me on a mountain bike. Can I make some money doing that? Put me on a mountain bike. I'll, I'll fly down a hill. Um, and then, you know, and then you're off of insurance for a while and you're like, I'm not going to put mountain biking on there. I don't have any insurance. There's, I'm not going to pay for that. Adult injury. problems come in. Uh, uh, yeah. My premium doesn't cover this. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I got to take 100% this off. I get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, oh man, it was a fun experience. So, but I love your, I love your, uh, english story because it's that's that's one i always thought i could do scottish and i could do about one sentence of scottish because they teach you uh in improv they taught us how how to get started doing it they have one sentence uh where you say it's a great great day to go motor car racing 
and you go, uh, it's a great, great day to go motor car racing. And that's, and you're supposed to just keep going. Keep going that. from there. Can you imagine it if you were in an audition and it. it was, it was, it was an audition, a Scottish audition about Scottish butter. And you had to say that line just to get going. So you tell the casting director, I'm just going to say this just to get going. And then you go on from there. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's, and dude, when I say I was mortified, like I was like mortified. Like I was like, I made a huge mistake at that yeah. moment. And the hubris that I had when I checked those boxes is unreal. And it's like, oh my God, you want to sink into a puddle and like <laughs> leave fast. Especially when you see the, especially when like, you, like you're hearing some of the other dudes who are doing it and like, these guys are fucking good. And what the hell am I doing here? You know, yeah. they're like, you can't do an English, English. accent. Yeah. I can hardly speak in an American accent. Yeah. My diction's for shit. What am I doing? Right, right. Yeah. You know? Oh my God. It's so funny. Well, that's cool. That's a great, that's a great story to 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 wrap things up on. Um, I will say one, one yeah. last thing. I, I went back and watched some old videos of yours today. Uh, like the one that you and Ashley did and some of your other stuff. Yeah. Um <laughs> which I know is like way back now, but I loved it. And I'd love to see more from you guys. Like it was so fun, like watching that stuff. And uh, I'm like 60 pounds thinner in that video. God, it was, you were great though. It was, uh, it was so much, it was fun to watch. And I was like, man, we all, we got to shoot a sketch sometime soon. Um, and do, Absolutely. Do I'm totally down. Yeah. Uh, Please yeah, just get, get some stuff going, create our own stuff again. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Ken, this was awesome. It was it was great sitting down with you and, and having you on and and talking through. It was so much fun going through and, and, and like catching up on on your work. And uh, it's exciting to see what you've been up to and where things are headed for you, man. It's uh, the sky's the limit. I appreciate uh, you having me. It was a great time. time. Yeah, super fun. All right. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you again soon, man. Until then, uh, right. we'll keep an eye out for your uh, your episode on Superstore coming out. Uh, throw out your instagram so people might be able to like follow you and kind of keep an eye out for your work sure it is the uh, underscore devils underscore donut yeah cool that way yeah you cool. can keep an eye out for more of his stuff ken hodges uh yeah check him out guys he's on some great stuff and, and uh we look forward to what's next so i appreciate it, it sir all right talk to you soon <laughs> thanks for tuning in to a bit unraveled I'm Ryan Hansinger. We'll see you next week.